Hello, everybody. Welcome to another excellent, fantastic, amazing episode of everybody's favorite podcast that relates to the EWA that isn't Craig's podcast. It's the Hash Pen Report. Yay! Everybody's, <laughs> we're so excited to be here. And uh, everybody's so excited to listen, I assume. I don't fucking know. Um, we got we got a big card to go through. Stacked card. It's huge. And um, suitably, we've got uh, a stacked lineup on the show tonight. You won't believe the guests we've got on. So many. What I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I'm just going to start off uh, talking to our old regular John. How you doing, buddy? Yep, not too bad, not too bad. Yourself? Uh, not too bad. I'm all right. Um, I've got to ask a little question. I'm going to ask all the guests. Um, starting with John. So Halloween's coming up. This is all Hallow's Evil. It's a spooky pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Here's my question to you. Would you rather be a uh, Frankenstein's monster or a mummy? Oh, okay. Um, I would say a Frankenstein's monster because I, if I was a mummy, I'd be afraid that people would try to kind of take my rags off and use it as uh, toilet paper. <laughs> oh, Okay. So you're looking at the disadvantages of being a mummy rather than the advantages of being a Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, because like I guess there's going to be bad things about being a Frankenstein's monster as well, because you'll be like too big to go through most doors. You're <laughs> constantly banging your head, and also the fact that most of your body is composed of the corpses of other people. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that too as well. <laughs> but you know, he wants. Frankenstein to make him a wife, so you know he's uh, he's deep down Frankenstein's monster. He's quite a sweet man, you know. Yeah, he's a he's a lover, not a fire. He's a bit, well, he tries to kill Frankenstein, <laughs> and he does kill his. Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read the book Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read it? Uh, yeah, I did that at school years ago. Oh, cool! It's a really good book. Mm. Um, I'd rather be a mummy though, because. <laughs> Uh, mummies were like they existed way back in you know uh, ancient egypt and i find ancient egypt very interesting so i would love to like be there and then somebody wraps me up in bandages and goes dude in 2000 years you <laughs> you're just going to turn up whenever somebody opens your tomb looking for treasure and you get to spook him and i'm like that sounds awesome sign me up for that <laughs> um you know because that's my rationale be- behind that anyway um, although Frankenstein's monster is pretty cool, what does everybody else on the show think? Wow, thanks guys. <laughs> this is an old school show where it's just me and John, and um, I'll go and like find clips of Abby from old shows and just like pop them in so it sounds like a like a really old school hashtag report. All really, all I gotta do is just put like the sound of bubbling. Yeah, Every yeah. So often, and people are like, yeah, Abby's on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that guy. Anyway, let's. Do you want to do a show? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Let's fucking do one. Um, a show that is. Let's talk about all Hallows Evil. <laughs> that's um coming to you live from um the Civic Center in Amarillo, Texas, this Sunday, October twenty seventh, Halloween. It's a few kind days of. later. Yeah, it's not quite. <laughs> Basically. Um, although there's going to be... A, there's, there really is going to be a really scary show on uh, Halloween this this year. So we should be we should be very lucky that we get to watch the... Was it Crown Jewel? Uh, yes, on I believe Halloween. so. That's going to scare the heck out of you. Anyway, we'll talk about that soon. Let's start with the first match on the card, which is a grudge match between... Tony Storm and Kelly Klein. Now, this has been going on for a while, right? Yeah, I'd say it started uh, in the run-up to High Tension last month. So, uh, Kelly Klein was the person who first handed Tony Storm a defeat. Um, But it was deemed controversial by uh, Dean Malenko. And so, Tony Storm got her rematch... um, which Kelly seemingly won, only for Di Malenko to kind of say, nope, Tony Storm got her foot on the rope, so we're restarting the match, uh, even though her foot ended up on the rope after the three count had already been counted. Um, and then Kelly seemingly won by submission, but nope, Di Malenko stepped in again and said, 
no, I'm disqualifying Kelly Klein because she used a closed fist to smack uh, Tony Storm in the face. Fucking so, Dean Malenko, man. He's a bit of a dick. This son I of mean, a bitch. Always getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. So, understandably, now Kelly Klein is really pissed off and wants a rematch. And, you know, Tony Storm's coming up with excuses why it can't happen. Dean Malenko's getting involved and saying, no, nope, there's no way it's happening again. Um, and then it kind of fast forwarded to uh, this last month where Tony Storm was revealed to be the mystery opponent uh, chosen by Charlotte to take on Rhea Ripley. Um, and uh, Storm ended up winning that match despite the fact that uh, Kelly Klein tried coming out and again trying to force her to accept a rematch. Um, and it all sort of culminated this last week on Slam where, um, you know, uh, Kelly Klein went to Dean Malenko again and I guess he just was fed up of all of her complaints and, you know, uh, requests for a rematch that he just said, fine, you've got your match at the pay-per-view. So here we are. I like I like how that's all it takes to break Dean Malenko. Like he's been a thorn in this woman's side for so long, and then all that she had to do was just go, "Dude, can, we, can we please?" And he's like, "All right, yeah. <laughs> you win." I suppose. Who, that's why it's the magic word. <laughs> he said, "Please." Um, who is playing Kelly Klein and Tony Storm? Um. Well. I don't think anyone's playing Tony Storm at the moment. She's sort of. Uh, it was uh, Zed, I believe, yeah. who was playing her, but um, now she she seems to have maybe been picked up by uh, Noah, um, but I can't say that a hundred percent with a hundred percent certainty. But it seems like she's been sort of uh, aligned with the Dominion, so it could be that. It's going to be, uh, you know, a long-term thing there. But as for Kelly Klein, I think that's just uh, someone brand new to the Fed, as far as I'm aware. Nice. Well, you know what, buddy? Nice work. You know, you've you've kind of taken this storyline, you know, kind of like invented it and like made it into something. Mm. Because like, you know, we all thought that Tony Storm was going to be gone from the, the company after Zed left, you know? Uh, exactly, yeah. So I think it's pretty cool to like pull that thread together and uh, turn it into like a positive because even if nobody really is playing Tony Storm, like even if it's just a, 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 you know a prop for the basis of the of a feud, it, at least it, it serves a purpose to get <coughs> Kelly Klein over, you know. And um, and what's good about that is that you know it adds more contenders to the women's championship pool because this is the first of three women's matches on the on the card mm -hmm. and which i think has got to be a first like outside yeah. of sensational sunday when it was like uh, all women's matches there's never been that many women's matches on an ewa pay-per-view before i don't think so yeah so like that's great news for everybody really because it shows that uh, the women's division is still kicking which i'm very happy about mm. um, as i've inadvertently found myself a part of it recently um, and the the champion of it. Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody, but this was a uh, hundred percent an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean for it to happen, but you know, uh, it did. So I, of course, be the, uh, as as the representative, I guess, of the women's division at the moment. I'm very happy to see more people stepping up and making storylines, and you know, giving us fun stuff to read that involves the women. So I'm all for this. Nice work, buddy. What else can we say about this one? Um, <coughs> uh, just that, you know, it's like you say, it's going to be a good sort of um, a chance for Kelly Klein to establish herself, like this whole feud has been. So, um, yeah, I think the match itself is probably, you know, going to be able to kind of guess where it's going to go. But uh, that's not a bad thing because you know, everyone's sort of rooting for Kelly Klein to finally get her revenge on Dean Malenko and Tony Storm. So it'd be interesting to see how it all plays out. I want to see Kelly Klein versus Dean Malenko now. Because that Dean mm -hmm. Malenko character, I always thought he was cool. But you know what? Turns out he's a villain. 
<laughs> you hate to see that, you know. Uh, yeah. Maybe next on the next episode of Slam, like the main event will be Kelly Klein versus Damalenko. <laughs> Please do that. If you do that, I will uh, be very happy. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we go to the next match? Next match. Yeah. Heck yeah. The next match. Yeah, you'll be interested in this one. It's a trick or treat tag team street fight. Interesting. Uh, mm. Model of Truth. I gotta say, I love that tag team name. Yeah, it's so very simple. Good. It's so obvious, but it's perfect. Very nice. Uh, versus Jerry the King Lawler and the Honky Tonk Man. I gotta say, I really like that <laughs> tag team name as well. It's a classic. <laughs> it's straight to the point. Who's who's in the tag team? Oh, it's Jerry Lawler and the Honky Tonk Man. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so obvious, now. A trick or treat tag team street fight. Mm. What? So, I mean, I'm sure you must have seen these uh, trick-or-treat street fights on uh, WWE television over the, the last few years. It's usually a case of, um, you know, having lots of uh, jack-o'-lanterns around the ring, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, like a bucket full of apples that you can, you know, bob <laughs> for. Um, and, yeah, just... Uh, Utter bullshit like that, really. Boy, that sounds devastating. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a brutal match. Can you imagine, like, on the commentary, they're like, Oh my god, Jerry Lawler's got the apple bucket! <laughs> and he's dumping the water all over that guy's head! Son of a bitch! They probably all wouldn't right, say son of a bitch. Let's not spoil the match, though. Let's, uh... <laughs> well, come on, man. It's pretty obvious that if you had a... <laughs> <laughs> like, a little apple bobbing bucket you would stick somebody's getting that over their heads for sure maybe but maybe not i mean no if it doesn't happen people are gonna be like oh, you're teasing us man <laughs> it's not fair um and like little will they have like bags of like sweets and stuff uh possibly yeah maybe <laughs> do that <laughs> what if like model of truth have to like knock on a door and then like when the door opens, they have to hope that it's um, somebody nice giving them candy. Uh, and then one time they open, like they knock on the door, and then like Jerry Lawler and Honky Tonk Man jump out and they start beating the shit out of them. And that's the tr that's the trick. So it's like, hey, come on, man! <laughs> it's, you're the one dunking apples over people's heads. So I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah, that that could happen. So. <laughs> I have a feeling it's not going to happen. So, um, to get things back on track, you could probably um, give us a little bit of a, a breakdown to how we got to this particular match, right? Oh, Okie doke. So, uh, it was last month, I believe, that uh, Honky beat Rick Martel in a singles match, uh, which kind of led to um model of truth kidnapping jimmy hart the next week to kind of force honky tonk and the king to uh, uh agree to a tag team match at high tension um and that match uh ended up in a double count out when uh jimmy hart tried to interfere in the match and that brought out like the rest of the uh Santanic clown posse um and rather than stay and fight like honky king and Jimmy Hart decided, nope, we're getting the hell out of Dodge, and basically just ran away, causing like the uh, the SCP to chase after them. Um, so the next week, um, it was the Model of Truth against the debuting uh, Heath Slater and Trevor Murdoch, but then King and Honky, being the dastardly heels that they are, interfered in that match and cost them the win again. Um, and... Uh, then King and Honky were kind of pissed off because uh, Model of Truth were invited into the uh, Briscoe Barnyard Brawl uh, when they weren't. So um, Model of Truth ended up winning their, their first round match against the Young Bucks. And then they met uh, Slater and Murdoch in the finals in a rematch from like two weeks prior. But uh, before they could get their revenge, Honky and the King sort of appeared on the t uh, EWA Tron, uh, started insulting them, and then kind of uh, made them get counted out and gunged on the stage as well. So 
uh, yeah, they they kind of they uh, Honky and King have been getting won over on uh, the SEP for uh, the last couple of weeks, so they're out for revenge right now. I see. You're a real couple of uh, old school heels. Go, yeah, well, you know, going with the old guns routine. Boy, I haven't seen that since back in '46 when the old uh, <laughs> cowboy boys used to get gunged every week by the abominable uh, apple farmers. I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> you put apples in my head. I don't know. Anyway, so that's it. Sounds like a very interesting kind of fight. You would imagine Model of Truth might want to, you know. Are they going to pull some kind of gunjin shenanigans of their own? They want they, they want to get, you know, a little bit of revenge. I mean, there's only so much I can really say without spoiling stuff, so... Ooh. Best I don't answer any more questions about this match. Ooh, okay, so we're, okay, so we're in for something pretty big. No, <laughs> I don't mean to build expectations. Something amazing but... is going to happen. It's going to blow uh, your fucking minds, guys. It really won't. So check that match out if you want to just freak the fuck out. <laughs> You're like, what? I didn't even see that coming. Unbelievable. I cannot wait. That's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, dear. <laughs> Are you writing it? Uh, I may be, yes. Okay. Do you want to take my suggestions for like stuff to do in the match? Because I got lots. If you want to uh, blow people's minds. Just send them uh, to me in a PM. That'd be fine. You got it. <laughs> All right. Should we go to the next match? Yes. Yes. Next match. Ne- oh, we're, we're very Edwardian today. <laughs> you, is that Edwardian? I, I, I don't know what it was. Like, it was almost like one of the uh, the Skepsis or whatever they're called from um, uh, the, 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 the thing that was on. Netflix recently. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't remember what it's called. So <laughs> I don't have Netflix, so I don't know. Like whenever people talk about television shows or you know shows like that on Netflix, I'm like, oh, I don't. Is it okay? I have no idea. I can't even help you with with your quandary, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, god damn it! It was the fucking Jim Henson thing with the Muppets and everything. But oh, was it like the Dark Crystal? Or- Dark Crystal, like that. yeah, that was, was that one. it. Yes. Cool. Was it good? Uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed the uh the TV series more so than the movie. In fact, I don't think I've seen the film. I don't think so. No, nah, I won't bother. Oh, sweet! I won't bother then. That's all right. <laughs> Have you seen Labyrinth? Yeah, Labyrinth is amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna let the next match. <laughs> <laughs> Is a six-man tag team match, the Glorious Bees, or Glorious BS, since there's no apostrophe, or I'm not seeing an apostrophe. Glorious BS versus uh, the Gorillas of Destiny. Glorious BS versus God. This is a weird one so far. Mm-hmm. But okay, so it's a six-man tag team match. That's correct. All right, Glorious Bees is Bobby Roode. Yeah. Yep. Uh. Byron Corbin. Yep. Who who else's name begins with B? Brian. Br- um, who else begins with B? Brady. Brady. No, I was only joking. Oh, Brady. <laughs> <It's> Brady. <laughs> yeah, he's on the team. Bryce. It's Bryce. <laughs> Bryce. Uh, it's being a wrestler. It's Bo Dallas. Oh, of course it's Bo Dallas. Oh, when you say it, it's so obvious, isn't it? Son of a bitch. Um, the Gorillas of Destiny, who who is on that team? Do they all begin with B as well? No, they they begin with... Well, actually, uh, the third man that they've drafted in does begin with B. He is uh, Bad Luck Fail, I want to say. I, I've never really pronounced his name before, but I think that's it. Okay. Uh, and then the other two are the actual... G-O-D, which is Tangaloa and Tamatonga. Oh, okay. I've heard of Tamatonga. I think. Yes. I, I think, think one of them used to be in NXT or WWE back in the day, but... Oh. I... Okay. 
Well, then yes. maybe that's what I know about them. I don't, well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> this is good. A fucking tag team, six man tag team match with people that I don't know fuck all about. So <laughs> I'm very sorry, but you know, I don't. This is gonna surprise a lot of people, but I don't pay attention to anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. You would think after three years we would get a host that knows what he's talking about. But by golly, I've managed to skate through it this far, so let's see how much further I can go. Um, what is the basis for this six-man tag team match, then? Right, so uh, last month at High Tension, it was the Glorious Bees challenging for the uh, tag team titles. Uh, but before that match, they had a bit of a backstage run-in with the Gorillas of Destiny. Um, so <coughs> that put the two teams on a bit of a collision course where, uh, the next week G.O.D. kind of confronted Glorious Bees, um, yeah, almost like giving them a bit of stick for the, uh, the fact that they lost the, the tag team title match the week before, but that ended up going against them because then they got beaten down by, uh, the Glorious Bees and sort of outmatched by the numbers game. Um, so that then set up a tag team match on the following week slam, but uh, this time there was another uh, assault, this time backstage, um, and during that, Tangaloa got taken out, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, which meant that um, Tamatonga basically had to go it alone against uh, Baron Corbin and uh, Bo Dallas, so... Uh, try as he might, he gave it his best shot, but he ended up falling short. Um, and you know, the next week, uh, rather than give up and accept that they've been kind of bested, uh, the GOD came out and challenged Bo Dallas, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Roode to a match at the pay per view with Glorious Bees thinking, Oh, cool, it'll be another handicap match then if it's those two against the three of us. But then the G.O.D. Re- revealed that their third man was Bad Luck Fail. Okay. There's a guy in there, Tangaloa? Yes. Is that his name? Okay, whenever you said his name a lot, it sounded like you were saying Tangela, who is a Pokemon. <laughs> so <laughs> I got really distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Think about Pokemon. See, we can always turn things back to Pokemon. You know that? Yeah, I'd prefer if we didn't, though. Why? I'm not a Pokemon fan. You should be. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Mm. What? I'm not... Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, about to go into a thing, and then I'm like, no, this is not the, not the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. All I'm going to say is it's really good, and everybody loves it. So, so there's some heat with this six-man tag team match, then. There is indeed. It's been building up. I like it. That's very interesting. Is this match going to end? Or is it going to be like, do we have to specify that this match definitely has to have an end, like a winner? <laughs> like, are Gorillas of Destiny going to start piling crap underneath the glory <coughs> bees and then hit the uh, hammers, you know? Well, I, I don't know is the honest answer. But, um, I mean, there's potential for a straight-up tag team match at some point as well. Or this could easily be like the big end to the feud. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Interesting. Interesting. It's the, it's, you know, this is what, and the second tag team match of three um, mm-hmm. on the show as well. So that's really cool because, you know, quite often in the EWA history, the two divisions that seem to suffer the most are the tag team division and the women's division. And it's super cool to see both um, divisions being like represented really well on this show, with like good storylines to all their, you know, build up and and everything like this. It isn't just like a couple of throwaway matches or something just to get your name on the card. Like they all have build, and they all you know get get people interested. So I'm very very happy about that. To see yeah, absolutely. Both divisions at once. Because how many podcasts have we done where we're like, hey, this month, this one's doing really well, but this one's not doing so good. And then the month after that, it's the opposite. You mm-hmm. know? And then fucking this month, spooky Halloween month, you know, everybody's firing on all cylinders to um, to get both divisions looking pretty fucking sweet. So I'm psyched about that, you know? 
Hell yeah. It's like you say, it's a good sign for the Fed and good sign for those divisions. So, um, uh, yeah, and hopefully, like, after this pay per view, it will create, like, new opportunities for people as well. So, new challenges for titles and stuff like that, which is yeah. uh, what we want to see. Exactly. I think after this, I would say for sure, like, after this pay per view, you're going to see some interesting um like matchups i mean we'll talk about them later on but like for example the you know the world heavyweight championship and the women's championship match are both like kind of rematches you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i think that after this pay-per-view everything's gonna get shaken up like the divisions are gonna because they're blossoming and they're really like busy right now you're gonna see different contenders and different challengers in those divisions which, you know, is a good thing. So, everybody is awesome. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> should we next match? Or is there anything else we need to say about that one? Next match. Next match. Next match. <laughs> is that how we're doing it now? Do you just do it in a different voice every every show? No, I've, I've been pretty standard until the last time when I just kind of uh, forgot the voice I used and then did something different. Well, you know, I, I liked it. I added like a little bit of unpredictability in, you know. Next okay. next time do it in like a your spookiest, like scariest Halloween voice, okay? Okay. Next time after this one. Okay. Good. I'm looking forward to that. Don't <laughs> don't forget. Cause I'll call I'll try you not one. to. Okay, good. Uh the next match is a gr- another grudge match. Um Shard of Flair versus Rhea Ripley. So, um, who plays Rhea Ripley? That would be Jeff. Oh, sweet. Why did I forget that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, of course he does. I'm a fucking idiot. Um, so that's going to be a very, very good match. Um, Shard of Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Um, mm. c- can you tell us the, the build-up to this particular match? Yeah, so uh, pretty much Rhea Ripley has wanted a match with Charlotte for going on almost two months now, I'd say. Uh, She was kind of fed up of Charlotte being in the women's title hunt all the time uh, and wanted to kind of prove herself by, you know, facing Flair and beating her. But um, Charlotte was like, nah, you're not good enough to face me, so I'm not going to give you a match. Um, And, uh, you know... Rhea Ripley didn't want to take that for an answer. So in the end, Charlotte was like, all right, fine. I will choose a mystery opponent for you to face uh, on the first slam after high tension. And if you can beat that opponent, then you'll get your match with me. Uh, And as we kind of mentioned before, that opponent ended up being Tony Storm, uh, who actually won the match due to some shenanigans involving, uh, well, Kelly Klein trying to get involved, um, which distracted the referee, allowing the Dominion to kind of come in and take out Rhea Ripley. So, uh, yeah, it looked like Rhea's attempts to get Charlotte in the ring were thwarted. Um, but then the next week, Charlotte was just like, ah, you know what, I'll give you a match anyway. Um, just because I guess she wants to kind of shut Rhea up and prove that she doesn't belong in the ring with her. Um, and then, yeah, this last week on Slam, Rhea Ripley pretty much uh, got in a bit of a, a, a first strike against the Dominion after kind of uh, meeting them up with them backstage and taking out Tony Storm and Lacey Evans and having a bit of a... Uh, face off with uh, Charlotte, so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of all built up to this point now, where it's finally going to be Charlotte and Rhea Ripley one on one. Hopefully, without any Dominion at ringside to kind of uh, screw Rhea over. Nice, yeah. See again, like that's just nice, simple like storytelling. You know, it's good classic old school booking. You know, mm-hmm. just. I like the way Charlotte Flair is kind of going about it. Like, that's a really good, like, heel business. Like, for her to go, you're not good enough to fight me. Um, And then for her later on to kind of change her mind. I like that because it's a very, like, to me, it's a very Flair thing to do. 
Like, yeah. the narcissism, they're like, dude, of course I can beat you. I'm fucking Charlotte Flair, you know? <laughs> I can beat anybody. So I like that. And also it makes Rhea Ripley look good as, like, the kind of plucky underdog, you know? Mm. Yeah, for sure. Trying to chase after the, the bigger dog, Charlotte Flair, former champion Charlotte Flair. So, like, that's a big deal if Rhea Ripley could, like, take down Charlotte Flair. Um, would definitely, you would imagine, propel her, like, pretty close to championship contendership. Well, yeah, and Rhea's got, like, a, a budding friendship with uh, Sasha Banks as well. So if Sasha Banks ended up winning the world uh, women's title uh, at this show as well, then that could make for an interesting story down the road as well. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, I guess. You say that, but, like, that would be really interesting. Like, the dynamic of it would totally work. Mm. Again, that would be, like, a natural kind of story progression, but it would also totally work, you know, even though it's, like, very old school, you know, the classics work for a reason, you know? That's why the classics. Yeah. You know? I don't want to sound like I'm, like, too pro-old school, but, you know, every day I feel like... More and more, like, I'm becoming Jim Cordette, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he'll say stuff, and I'm like, you know what, he's not wrong. <laughs> and then I'm like, sometimes he's wrong, <laughs> you know? I mean, it could be worse, though. It could be you're agreeing with Vince Russo more, so... Right, well, the problem with Vince Russo is he doesn't know, he can never make up his mind. <laughs> so, like, you know, he contradicts himself all the time, so, you know, you, you couldn't possibly agree with it, because he doesn't know, he doesn't even know what it is he's agreeing with. You know, yeah. He's like, no, bro, it was somebody else. I'm like, oh, but it was really good. And he's like, oh no, it was me all along. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally me, bro. I mean, I was there. I planted the seeds. You know, that's what I did. How do you like my Vince Russo impression? Uh, uh yeah. I mean, it sounded quite a bit like your normal voice, but yeah. you, you did say bro. So. I did, right? It's so it's, I could. It's like he's in the room. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, dude, get out of my room fucking Vince Russo, you know? <laughs> anyway, is there anything else you want to say about that match? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's, it's a, like we were saying before, it's a good showcase for the women's division and um, could set up a potential new contender for the women's title down the line. So, good stuff all around. I'm real excited about that, man. You know, like, um, Jeff's a guy that, like, is always like really close to contendership, you know, championship contendership. Mm. And um, this could be the one if he just like st <coughs> sticks with it, he could like, he could, he could easily find himself in there again. You know what I mean? He's, Definitely. He's treaded those boards before, I believe. Who was, who was he um, women's champion with? Uh, Ayako Hamada. That's who it was, Hamada. I couldn't remember who it was. And I think he was champion for. Going on something like 10 months and yeah. pr uh, pretty much undefeated during that entire time as well. I, I don't think she even lost the title technically. Uh, I, I believe it was, ended up being like a motorcycle accident and she had to kind of relinquish it in the end. Hey, we've all been there. <laughs> we have all been there. Um, cool. So, you know, maybe. Um, but then, you know, Noah with Charlotte Flair, also a former champion, so... Would mm -hmm. not be surprised to see him back in the mix anytime soon. Absolutely, yeah. Should we go to the next match? Next match! Oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> that was better than I that we could have ever imagined. So there you go. You're really good at doing that. I know that sounds sarcastic, but I didn't mean it like that. You're very good at spooky Halloween voices, John. Uh, I couldn't do that for very long, though. Well, you don't have to. You just have to Thank do the next God. match, and it's perfect. Um, the next match is for the Tag Team Championships. It is the Briscoes versus Murdoch and Slater. <coughs> do Murdoch and Slater have a team name? Um, well, I think they kind of want to be known as Sweet and Sour. Okay. W with uh, Heath Slater being Sweet and Trevor Murdoch, as you could probably guess by like the constant expression on his face being mm -hmm. sour. He does have that kind of face. Mm. Like, kind of like a bulldog chewing on a bumblebee. Yeah, he's he, like always. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never see that guy just looking like totally normal, you know, just like no. eating a biscuit or whatever. No, he's always just like he's about to spit tobacco into a pot, you know. They used to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I said it, uh, and I'm like, that yeah, is- yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a very interesting match. I he was he was the guy who plays Murdoch and Slater. Or sweet and sour, if you will. Um, he was here before with Trevor Murdoch, right? Yeah, but, well, he was uh, Skinner and Jethro, who I think at the time was supposedly uh, Skinner's nephew, I want to say. Okay. Um, but yeah, now he's kind of uh, uh, shaken off that whole Jethro gimmick and kind of uh, you know, said that wasn't really me. That was a role I had to play because this was the only way I could get into the EWA sort of thing. Yeah. Whereas now he's able to be himself and uh, do what he wants to do. I like it. I like it. So, yeah, he's got a little bit of past history in the EWA, which is cool. And the Briscoes, of course, is Chalmers, who is <coughs> still on a roll with those guys. Yeah, champ since uh, red, white, and bruised in the start of July. So yeah, that's the thing about Chalmers, man. Once he hits his stride, it is hard to break him. Absolutely, yeah. Once he gets going, you know, like sometimes it, when he gets a new character, it's like a little kind of slow to start sometimes. But then once he hits his stride, you're like, son of a bitch. Yeah, it's always like a feeling out process, though, yeah. isn't it? It's almost like he has to kind of. And this is not uh, exclusive to Chalmers as well, but it, it's almost like with a new character, sometimes you uh, you do take like a, a little bit of time just to find your feet and figure out where you want to go with them and where your strengths are, like in terms of storytelling or whatever. Right. And once you hit that, then boom, off to the races. It's, you know, that's what you, you kind of, you're trying to do. Right, I love that when you go back and like read. Whenever you re- establish the character, when you go back and read like your first role play as him, you're like, what's so so different? You know what I mean? Because like you might have a good idea in your head, but like later on, like once you figure out the specifics of it and actually get rolling, then you find yourself like getting into a groove and you're right, and it just ends up being totally different from what you brought in. You know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just writing in general, anyway. It's like a it's an evolving thing you don't uh start writing something and have to stick with what your original plan was to begin with you can uh kind of you know throw shit at the wall and take it off in new and wonderful directions right like that's happened to me a ton of times whenever i have like a i get like an idea for a role play so i'll start writing it just so i can get to the idea sometimes it's just a joke i come up with a joke and i'm like how do i get to this joke so, like, I just come up with a punchline, and I'm like, how do I get here? So I have to write a role play just for one joke. And I often find that, like, either what happens is I start writing it and just get into such a groove that I forget about the joke. <laughs> I've just written a totally other thing. Or I write, write something, and I get to the joke, and then realize that, like, everything else was way better than the one joke I was trying to build up to, you know? <laughs> Um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so how how is this? So there was a tournament, right? Yes, the uh, the Briscoe Barnyard Brawl, which uh, featured who was it? It was uh, Trevor Murdoch and Heath Slayer. Obviously, uh, they beat Mustache Mountain in the first round. Um, Bottle of Truth beat uh, the Young Bucks. Which led to the final last week uh, with Murdoch and Slater beating Model of Truth thanks to the aforementioned Honky Tonk and King interference. Classic. Classic interference. So yes. once again, we've got like a good solid like old school kind of build up, you know, like there's a couple of tag teams buzzing around and the Briscoes have just kind of, you know, taken all comers with their big ladder match or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Not so long ago. So now they're like, time to get things in order. There's so many tag teams. Let's just kind of sort through them and figure out who is logically 
going to come and fight us next, you know, old school mm-hmm. tournament. I like it, you know, it's hard, hard to go wrong with that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I dig it. And um, it's also cool because this is a pretty fresh, like, matchup, right? Well, yeah, I mean, Heath Slater and Trevor Murdoch have only really been around for the last three weeks at this point. So, uh, but it's been a hell of a three weeks because they've basically gone three and oh in that time. So, won a tournament, you know? Yeah, they've got all the momentum on their side, whereas the Briscoes uh, haven't had a match since high tension. So, uh, yeah, the pressure is almost on the champs more than it is on the, uh, the challengers. I dig it though, you know, I really like that, um, you know, somebody new is getting a, or newish or, you know, kind of not like one of the old classics, like me or you, you know, mm-hmm. is, uh, getting a, 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 a good, like, opportunity and a good chance at the tag team championships, you know? Yeah. So I dig that. Again, shows like the health of the, of the division, you know, it's not that this tag team, this new tag team managed to get to the to the finals just because they were the only one there. They got there because they were that good against some other very competitive teams. So I dig it, you know? Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Like you say, it uh, opens up the door as well. So uh, with the other tag team matches going on in the show, the, there's going to be uh, no shortage of uh, contenders afterwards as well, like no matter who comes out with the titles. Exactly. I feel like we're going to have a pretty fresh kind of title match in the near future, if you know what I mean. And this one's still pretty fresh, too. I like it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I dig it. I dig it. Is there anything else you want to say about this one? Nope. Okay, should we go to the next match? Next match! Ooh, you're sticking with the Halloween theme. I like it. We should probably should have done this in the beginning, so it would have, like, hey, you know what? You live and learn, you know? (laughs) We're just figuring stuff out as we go. The next match is for the women's championship match. It's for the women's <laughs> championship. It's uh, JoJo versus Sasha Banks. So I guess I can like talk about a match for once. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I'm fucking in it, you know. I'm so sorry to anybody who makes this. You know, if I if I seem like I'm not paying attention to people's storylines, it's just I'm a very stupid man. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, it's hard for, like, information to seep into my head. So I'm sorry if I seem very forgetful. But anyway, um, yeah, this has been going on for a little while. Last month, JoJo and Sasha Banks fought for the rights to Bradley, uh, which was a Stone Cold classic. Everybody agreed. They were like, well, this is easily the best match of 2019. Which is very sweet of them. They didn't have to say that. And I kind of missed like a week building up to that match. And I was a little annoyed about that. Because I wanted that match to have a bit more build and make a little bit more sense. So then we thought, let's just, you know, cut to the quick. Let's go straight to um, Sasha Banks versus Jojo for the championship. And I think I missed another week of building up for for this stuff. And I was annoyed about that too. Because... um, I think we, but I still think we did a pretty good job building it up. So basically, Sasha Banks, in JoJo's mind, Sasha Banks came up with this whole Bradley equals Bailey scenario just to mess with her. <coughs> and Sasha Banks is frustrated at the fact that her old friend just doesn't seem to be paying attention to her anymore, and she's frustrated with JoJo, who she sees as like the the villain in the piece who has done something to her friend. And she's just like, well, you know, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of shark cage matches and screwing around with people with mustaches. Let's just get it on. And Jojo was like, okay, cool. So that is, I think, pretty much in a nutshell, the way this one built up. It, it's just, you know, the tension from last month compiling on and it would have been the natural kind of end to things anyway. Mm-hmm. Would be, um, Jojo versus Sasha Banks and we didn't want to have a gimmick match because maybe because the shark cage was so gimmicky um, <laughs> and very silly and this one seems a lot more grounded and in the last one what we wanted to do was make it seem like both sides had a legitimate case you know 
Um, yeah. Where, like, whoever won, it would kind of make sense. And then for this, we figured, it, it you know, now it's more kind of... Um, Sasha Banks is more of a, like, a clean-cut heel now, if you know what I mean. She's more heelish than she was a month ago. So now she's kind of got all of her attention focused on the women's championship. So that's how that match goes, I believe. Okay, so she's not really uh, interested in uh, sort of de-mustaching Bradley anymore or anything like that. I think at the moment, Sasha Banks is trying to like kind of get everything in order. And she's like, well, you know, Jojo beat me at the shark cage match, but that was a shark cage match for the possession of a person. You know, it was very, very strange. Mm-hmm. So she's like, no, if I, because she thinks that Jojo was the one that kind of um, changed Bradley and Bailey, you know, made Bailey into Bradley, if you will. <coughs> um, she's like, well, maybe if I take down Jojo, I can I can focus on Bradley after that, you know. What yeah, I mean? um, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because Joe 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 is a champion. She's focused on that. If I can like weaken that part of the of the tag team, then I can you know then focus on the the Bailey Bradley thing. Mm. So that's the way it is at the moment. You know, I don't want to spoil anything about the future of this feud. Because you would imagine there's going to be more to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, even, you know, like, no matter which way the title goes in this match, there's still the issue of Bradley slash Bailey as well that needs to be resolved. Uh, like, once you open that box, you can't kind of put it away again, really. Um, so, yeah, like, I would assume there's going to come a point where um, you know, Sasha is either going to kind of be, um, you know, uh, justified in her uh, kind of chase of Bradley and trying to expose him as Bailey. But, um, yeah, at the same time, it would be a bit of a swerve if he tried to pull off the mustache and it wasn't budging and it turned out Bradley was a man all along. So... It would you know, be quite a twist, wouldn't it? That mm. would be a hell of a twist. Well, the thing is, at the moment, like because the women's division is starting to fire on all cylinders, and you know this is like the second month we've done JoJo versus Sasha Banks, we are we'd be very let let's just keep an eye on the way the women's division goes mm-hmm. for the moment. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna spoil anything or, or go too far with that, but you know. The the idea of keeping things fresh, like we've mentioned earlier with other championships yeah. and stuff, is very much in the back of our heads. So we're gonna things things will be wrapped up eventually. Okay, that's cool then. If I may be so cryptic. <laughs> but we're still I'm still figuring stuff out because I wanna kind of get it right. You know? Yeah. But we shall see. We shall see. Um is there anything else you wanna say about that one or should we move to the next one? Next match. Oh, I like that spooky ghost. He that seemed, was a weird one. He seemed quite confident. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. The next match, the main event, is for the World Heavyweight Championship, and it is a Texas Death Match. <coughs> and it's Pete Dunne versus Marty Skrull. So this is a rematch from last month. And the month before. And the month before that as well. Yes. Um, is there going to be another match after this? Oh God, I hope not. Oh, so it's it's going that well, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the thing is, um, I think we've we've we did a, a pretty good feud for the most part, and then this last month, I would suggest that uh, like me and Craig both feel like we've maybe let it peter out a little bit. Like we haven't done our best work this last month, not by a long shot, which sucks because. Um, Newt set this whole uh, Texas death match up in a really good way and he's, you know, everything about it, like the whole fact that this pay-per-view is in Amarillo, Texas where, like, the Texas death match kind of originated and was, uh, like, a big mainstay with the funks and whatnot uh, like, 
he gave us all the tools to kind of, um, you know, make this extra special. And me and Craig have almost sort of run out of steam a little bit. But, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to sound negative about my own feud or whatever, because I'm definitely not. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's still going to be a, a, hopefully a good match as well. Like, uh, I, I've been having a bit of fun with the uh, role playing this week uh, even though it's trying to get it all out as quickly as possible before like uh, I go away for the weekend and I'm not around to role play anymore and Craig's in the same boat as well so um, uh, it's, it's it's you know it's a weird situation to be in really I almost think like three months in a world title feud is probably too much and uh, it it may have been better off doing this, like in hindsight, in uh, on a random slam or whatever, and setting up a new contender for this this pay per view. But um, you know, it is what it is, and we're gonna bust our balls to kind of do the best work that we can. So we'll see how it goes, I guess. Well, that's fair. I mean, I don't think anybody's gonna like begrudge you guys over being a bit burned out for running three months because that's hard it really is once you start running three months against the same opponent like you just naturally just run out of stuff to say yeah 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 and it's like you know compared to say the feud i had with josh earlier in the year like dunn and Sir joe we planned that out for multiple months as well so we kind of knew what we were doing in advance and it was easier to get to Whereas this was a feud where, like, even last month, it wasn't necessarily part of the plan, you know, everything that happened at high tension. Like, things changed along the way, and we kind of had to roll with the punches and, uh, you know, go in a slightly different direction. And because of that, that's kind of what led on to this month as well, and this this, uh, closing chapter of the feud. So... Um, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's, it's just been, uh, almost like a, a strange experience really, like trying to kind of react to stuff and build some momentum to it. And like I say, we probably haven't done the best job of that this month, but, um, uh, hopefully this match itself will be, uh, will sort of more than make up for that. Nice. Um, well, I usually quite like a good feud that goes on for like three months because I think that that's sometimes it's it's tricky to do to pull it off right because a lot of the times I think that it makes sense because you can have your three matches, you know, you know, share a win each and then have the final blow off match that works. That's old school. That makes sense. And the, the best time to do it is over three months, you know? Cause yeah, you but not a world things. title feud necessarily. Because I feel like we've almost hogged the title scene for doing this. And other people have suffered because of it. Well, not yeah, suffered, yeah. but, you know, they they can't get into the scene. And they're on the outside looking in. And it creates like a glass ceiling. And then you feel like, ah, oh, shit, I'm not part of the solution, I'm part of the problem. Well, no, I think that that would only really happen if next month's pay-per-view was also headlined with Pete Dunne versus Marty Skrull. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, I've got a shock for you because guess what's happening next month? Um, Pete Dunne versus Dean Malenko. <laughs> Is that what's happening? Uh, yes. <gasps> Good guess. Oh, Dean Malenko, you better, give, you better show him who's boss. <laughs> that bloody villain, Dean Malenko, always screwing stuff up. Um, but, like, you know, I for me, I think, like, three months is, like, the max for a feud. Like, mm. that's it. But, like, I'm also not opposed to feuds that do go run, that, that run for three months because I think it makes sense. But I think, if it, like, if you were, like, uh, by month four, if that was still the the headline of thing, then I could see where people would be like, this is, this is bullshit, you know? So I don't think that, I think this is a logical kind of blow off for it, in my opinion. And also yeah. like, because it's a world heavyweight championship, it makes sense that it would 
you know, like you were like, we we could have done this on an episode of Slam, and I'm like, yeah, but yeah. it's the World Heavyweight World. Championship. It's a big one, you know. It deserves the kind of blow off that you would get at the pay per view. Mm. No, yeah, yeah, I get that as well. I just, I, I, I think because this is um, like another feud this year, which has been for the world title, which has spanned multiple pay per views. Like we had the the PCO Ken Shamrock feud at the start of the year as well. It it almost feels like uh, it's too much in a way for the world title. Like I I'd, I'd love to get back to sort of uh new challenges each and every month and not have to try and make each feud sort of the big kind of uh feud of the year type feud or whatever Mm -hmm. it just you know tell like a succinct story and uh bring in fresh blood and kind of like we were talking about with the the women's division and tag team division and stuff as well earlier on like yeah you know it's it's good to get new faces in there and make people feel involved and like that they can move up the card and uh, potentially become a champion as well. So uh, hopefully, you know, once this this match and this feud is over with uh, at this pay per view, that will start happening again. I think so. Like I think that because this match, it seems pretty clear that it's going to be like the the finale between these two guys like it totally like will open up um the possibility for you know like new challengers yeah yeah so i think you're sweet there um is there anything else you want to say about that one or should we move to predictions 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 <laughs> that's a paul bearer predictions this is my spooky ghost well you know that's I, you know that's that's fair because he was a spooky man. He's a very spooky man, the Paul Bear. I mean, his name is Paul Bear, so you know. Yeah, he kind of didn't really have any choices what he was going to yeah, do in life. That's all he had to do. Um. All right, Kelly Klein versus Tony Storm. What do you think? Uh, Kelly Klein all the way. Logic would say Kelly Klein in this one, right? Yeah, surely. Wouldn't be surprised if there was a swerve, but um, if Dean Malenko got his fucking nose in there, you know what I mean? God damn it, Dimalenko. But if Dimalenko stays out of it, I'm going to pick Kelly Klein. Sweet. Predictions move really quickly when there's only two people. You know that? <laughs> um, trick or treat, tag team, street fight, model of truth versus um, Honky Tonk Man and Jerry Lawler. John, what do you think? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, the model of truth, they've got this one in the bag. That's fair. I'm going to pick... Um, Jerry the King Lawler and Hoggy Tonk Man. <laughs> Is this going to be like <laughs> you picking one team and not me picking the other for the rest of this match? Uh, the predictions? Yes. Okay, cool. It's just, you know, whatever. People don't like it. And we don't care. Tell someone. <laughs> Six man tag team match Glorious uh, Bees versus Gorillas of Destiny. Um, I guess say Glorious Bees because Craig hasn't won a pay-per-view match in a while now and I think he's going to win both of his this time. Ah, I was going to say, like, so you think he's going to at least win one of them? <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, I pick Gorilla's Destiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. Oh, this is a toughie. Uh, I feel like Rhea Ripley almost needs to win more, so I'm going to say Rhea Ripley. Dude, I mean... I was about to pick Rhea Ripley too. Uh, but th- that this was really hard. Okay, I'll pick Charlotte Flair. You can pick Rhea Ripley. Okay, that's fair. Um, <laughs> good to see you sticking to your guns. That's good. <laughs> uh, the Briscoes versus Murdoch and Slater for the Tag Team Championships. Well, I mean, you know, Murdoch and Slater beat Mustache Mountain, so they must be pretty damn good, I'd say. So, yeah. New yeah. champs. That's fair, man. But I, uh, like they always say, never bet against the champions. So I'm going to go with the Briscoes. Um, Jojo versus Sasha Banks for the Women's Championship. What do you think? Well, they say never bet against the champions. So uh, Jojo. Okay. I My my hand has been forced to pick <laughs> Sasha Banks then. Thank you, John. Um, 
the World Heavyweight Championship match, Pete Dunne versus Marty Scurll. What do you think about this one, John? <laughs> well, there's no way Marty Scurll is going to lose three times in a row to Pete Dunne. So that would be Marty embarrassing. Skull. That would be embarrassing if he did, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be shocking. So I'm going to pick Pete Dunne. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's pretty much the show. That's the card. We. It's kind of interesting to see no national championship match. But again, like the card was so stacked that would not be surprised to see if something was happening next week on Slam. And like we've covered before, I feel like that division is going to be kind of wide open pretty soon. You know, there's going to be loads of it's going to it's going to stay fresh as well. I think that like after this pay-per-view, everything's going to kind of change. You know what I mean? And well, um, and it's King of the Ring next month as well. Let's not forget that, which is also going to shake things up. Everybody's everybody's usually pretty psyched about King of the Ring. It's always mm. a lot of fun, and I love seeing how the way it all plays out. You know, so I think everybody's going to be not only are the the champions going to be worried that they're going to have new challengers, but also everybody's going to be gunning for that sweet sweet King of the Ring crown as well. So that's going to be fun to watch. Is there anything else you want to say about the the whole show? Um, I'm intrigued by this guy who's uh, apparently hosting it, uh, who I've never heard of, Joe Bob Briggs. Um, it's not exactly Elvira, or Elvira? I don't know how you pronounce the name. Elvira, I think, right? Yeah. Oh my god, uh, did I get a pronunciation <coughs> right and you got one wrong? Yeah, I think possibly, yeah. I'm probably still it's, wrong. That's okay, no one's listening to this, so no one will yeah, ever know. That's probably, yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're right. We kind of miss Elvira, though. Yeah. She's or at least that's Fenguli guy as well. Yeah, they're Italy staples. We gotta have them back. You know. Mm. Maybe they'll make an appearance. Ooh, spooky! <laughs> I think we've done a really good job of persuading people that this is a spooky Halloween show. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna put little cobwebs in the corner of the thumbnail <laughs> so that it really, <laughs> it's very very clear that this is a Halloween show. <laughs> Uh, cool. So I think that's the that's our show. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Uh, we appreciate it. Good luck to everybody. We are enjoying your storylines very much, and we'll see you in the next episode. So goodbye, you villains. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is a spooky ghost. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, that was like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs>